into the ground to get more oil and gas, scraping the last drop of oil and gas from the planet. So what it, what it involves is fracking goes much deeper than the conventional reservoirs. That's why it's called unconventional uh, gas and oil exploration and exploitation. So it can be, in the case of Argentina, where I'm coming from, is 3,000 meters deep. And it, it involves destroying the rock at, the, at this depth with fracturing with a lot of chemicals, a lot of water. As you can see here, this is American, uh, that's why it's in gallons, but this is a, a lot of, many billions of, uh, of uh, liters of water are used, about 40 million liters per well, which are being taken from the rivers and the water sources of the communities. And in many places, these are arid regions that don't have water at all, so they are stealing the water that is needed for life and agriculture to use it to extract the most destructive fuels for the planet. So it's not just destroying the, the climate in the sense of climate change, which it is, but also taking away the water, contaminating the aquifers, and creating cancer and a lot of diseases that I will tell you about, using up to 600 chemicals in a mix that are highly toxic, and then they are kept underground, and this is totally destructive for the soil, the air, the, the water, and human life altogether. So liquefied natural gas, just to tell you what this is about, is um, the gas is taken from the wells and then it's compressed 60 times so that it can be transported overseas. Uh, Nick was talking earlier about the pipelines that are used for transporting conventional gas. This is to transport gas that can be going a far distance, like in this case coming from the US or coming from South America and being exported to uh, Europe, Asia and so on. In order to have this, you need to build special terminals that will be able to take this gas from the ships. And the ships, they're so massive and they have so much super compressed gas that an explosion of one of these would be equivalent to a small nuclear weapon. Keep that in mind when we tell you later of the terminals that are going to be built in sites that have nuclear power plants. So it's total insanity. So continuing, this is what fracking looks like. You don't get one well. You get hundreds or thousands of wells all together because fracking involves going deep and then going horizontally. This is the new development that was made about uh, 10 to 15 years ago. So it allows them to fracture horizontally into the rock where the, the oil and gas are, hit, are kept like bubbles. So you need to break that so that the gas and oil can flow out and you can extract it. That's why you use a lot of water with chemicals with 5,000 atmosphere of pressure to break it up. And the problem is that this gas, the methane and the chemicals then permeate up into the aquifers and also they break the pipe because the pipes are not perfect. They're never really properly cemented, especially in third world countries where regulations are lax and companies are always trying to cut costs. And over time with earthquakes and little shaking of the earth, this eventually always fractures and you get irreversible contamination of the aquifers. But because the, the horizontal side only goes about 500 meters, they need to make a lot of wells next to each other to be able to properly extract. So this is what it looks, it's like a minefield. This is what fracking looks like. And just so you know, this is, you know, NASA has made a discovery that fracking is one of the leading contributors to climate change. This is not a minor issue. This is not a sideline problem, and it's not a problem of the past because Germany, France, and other countries of Europe have prohibited fracking in their own territory because they're doing it abroad. And the companies from Germany, France, England, and many other countries are fracking overseas, and the, their profits are coming to France, Germany, and Europe altogether. And also, they're using the money from the taxpayers to build terminals to import fracking. So whenever you're going to be using fracking at, um, gas at your home, you're going to be financing the destruction of the planet. You know, when you use gas for cooking, it's going to be fracking gas from the U.S. or from my country, from Argentina. So the organization called Earthworks used um, infrared footage, uh, special, special optical gas imaging camera at a fracking site and, you know, it looks clean under the normal eye, but there you can see what it really looks like. This is the constant emissions of methane into the atmosphere. And as you know, methane is many times worse than CO2 for heating and uh, holding heat in the air, and uh, it lasts for many years. So this is what is really going on, and as fracking expands all over the world and no one is stopping it, 
is becoming the worst contaminating industry the world has ever seen. And the US is pushing this worldwide. So if we allow Europe to buy this gas from fracking, it's only going to help them get bigger, get stronger, and to keep drilling the hell out of the planet. So this is the current situation, legal situation of fracking in Europe. The, green, the red and orange are the ones that have bans or moratoriums on fracking. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of, uh, of restrictions for fracking on European land. Yeah. What is moratorium? Moratorium is like a temporary restriction to prohibit the activity from going on until maybe further testing or until they prove it's not contaminating or something like that. Like there was one in England. I will tell you more about that because fracking also causes a lot of earthquakes. And in England, it was almost funny because the government was trying, going crazy to do fracking and then they had to halt it for, they put a moratorium for many years because of the earthquakes it was causing. And then one day they are reactivated and in one day they got four earthquakes that day and they had to stop it again. So why is fracking prohibited in all these places that you just saw? I recommend you guys watch if you haven't. There is this great documentary called Gasland. It's in the US and people are turning their faucets on fire. This is because the faucet water is contaminated with methane, among many other chemicals that are killing animals, causing cancer to people. And in some places, these people managed to get a lawsuit against the companies, and to get the companies had to put a private purification plant for each of these families at their home, a osmosis, reverse osmosis plant. But the chemicals are so corrosive that they go through and they dissolve the membranes of the purification plant. This is unrecoverable, so there's no way to save yourself. And this is in Australia, where a river is catching fire because of the same reason. So this is what's happening all over the world. And if Europe, of course, Europe is not going to allow fracking on its territory because people will be outraged in most countries. But this is what is doing it by being hypocritical and going against all, all values of consumer responsibility and everything that we always talk about because it's financing it happening a lot all over the world. So fracking, I was telling you, uses a lot of water. So what it's doing is depraving the local communities of the water they need for life, agriculture, and the little water they do have left is highly contaminated and full of chemicals that have irreversible illnesses like cancer, birth defects, and so on. I come from Argentina, which I think you all know where it is, and uh, the place I come from is in the west, where it's super dry, it's a wine region, and the uh, scarcity of water is huge because already of climate change. So there, they're expanding fracking like nonstop because we, happen, we have the bad luck that we are sitting on the second largest reservoir of gas and, and oil for, for fracking in the, in the planet. But extracting all of that would be equivalent to one and a half times the total emissions of the planet combined. So it's a carbon and methane bomb for the planet that needs to be stopped. Oh, okay. Uh, I, want, I meant to warn you before this slide. This is very graphic, but I thought it was important. These are medical images. These are some of the lethal consequences of fracking. And this is what people all over the world are suffering from, where they live. This is scientifically demonstrated. Living within 16 kilometers of a fracking well is associated with a lot of birth defects and a lot of uh, abortions and a lot of cancer cases and so on. Among them, you have some of these uh, uh, extreme deformation, malformation cases. And then, of course, cancer, leukemia, blood disorders, nervous system conditions, immunological conditions, reproductive system, heart disease, asthma, and the conditions go on and on and include a lot of unknown illnesses because many of these things have never been seen by science before. They're new. Um, fracking indu induces earthquakes, and also where I'm coming from in Argentina is a seismic region, so it's crazy the government is going to exacerbate the activity. And even in the U.S., this is official data, the, the increase of earthquakes in the central and eastern U.S., the west is already seismic, but the central and eastern is not so seismic, and they're getting huge spikes. Look at the red line on the left from 2010 or so when the fracking began at full, full blown, full scale how the earthquake went up. And here on the right, you have Oklahoma, which is a, a crazy example of how the, the intensity as well as the frequency of earthquakes went out uh, a lot. And this is from a news from England, 
where they had stopped fracking, as I was saying, and then they had to be restarted because they can't wait to get their hands on this. And uh, they had 17 earthworks in nine days, and they had to stop it again. And actually, Jeremy Corbyn, the guy from the left party, a week ago, he was joining the fracking demonstrations. He was saying he wants to ban fracking in England. So this is a very good sign. So it's making, and because of Fridays for Future, Extinction Rebellion, they're making some impact on the politicians there as well. Is there any fracking along the San Andreas Fault or no? The, no, uh, in California they're doing fracking, but oh. I don't think they're so crazy to do it there. And California is fighting to ban fracking. And oh. I think eventually they will manage to do so because they have a lot of uh, pressure to do that. But um, they're not fracking directly, as long as I know, on the San Andreas Fault. But we can do a little more research about that. Um, and, you know, it's just, as I was saying, they're taking us from where we need to go, which would be renewable energies, to where we don't need to go. And unfortunately, the most powerful man on the planet, Donald Trump, is at the head of this. You know, he's denying climate change, and he's turning the U.S. into a producer of oil and gas through fracking and pushing fracking all over the world for political reasons. Uh, and Clara will explain later, because fracking is not even profitable. It takes so much energy to take this from so deep into the ground that it's not cost effective at the current value of oil. But they're keeping it up artificially to just dominate the planet. And the U.S., because of this, has become the largest exporter in the world of gas, of LNG. And they need you to buy it from them. So, um, uh, and what he has done is he put tariffs on renewable energies, you know, to make more, more difficult to develop solar, wind, and instead they're subsidizing fracking. They're giving it 0% or so interest loans with the central banks that Nick was talking about. You know, keeping the interest rates low to give it free money, and this is a huge problem for the companies that Clara will also tell you, but what they're doing is this is the huge, these are the reserves based on the U.S. government information, of the, whole, the reserves of fracking uh, gas and oil all over the planet. And this is so much that it would just take us directly, it's like going even farther in the wrong direction, speeding toward the cliff. So this is why it's so important and fracking is a major issue worldwide that we need to fight together. I got a question, um, because in Denmark we are also going to have a pipeline unless we change it, transporting uh, natural gas. Um, to Poland, and the argument is that the gas is more climate friendly than the coal, so it's a transition fuel. Yes, it's still a fossil fuel, but it's better. Yes, the media have made a great campaign to make people believe the argument that he just said. And the problem is gas is really bad because of the methane emissions into the atmosphere, but I'm focusing specifically within this into fracking gas because that is a million times worse, because it's being produced through the most contaminating, one of the most contaminating industries in the planet. So gas is bad enough, and it ought to be fought, but also fracking it by itself, and gas coming from fracking is 10,000 times worse. That's why we need, and we're trying to make this presentation about that, and what the Fridays for Future students are doing to stop these terminals from being built. And just quickly, I will uh, explain more about this, but these are all the country's reserves of gas and oil that can be extracted from fracking. And uh, Argentina has the second largest uh, reservoir in the world, unfortunately. And, uh, well, this is values from Eastern and, North and Western Europe. As you can see, they don't have as much other than Russia, which has some, and uh, England and France have quite a bit. France has well, the most, which is great that France has prohibited fracking because it's a great uh, beginning. Germany doesn't have much. Germany also stopped fracking. And these are the total numbers. So look at this. This is two, uh, more than 2,000 trillion cubic meters of gas that can be extracted, and uh, four, uh, 418 billion barrels of oil. Add that to what Nick was saying about keeping it in the ground, and they're just going in the wrong direction to take even more from them. Yeah. Uh, what what is meant by reserves? By? Reserves. Reserves are the reservoirs that are at the beginning, the map that I was showing. They are deep underground, maybe 2,000 meters deep, that are in the rock, in bubbles. And the only way to get it out is through fracking, by going there, putting a lot of water, a lot of chemicals, a lot of pressure to release that into the, up, to get it up and purify it. 
So our story in Argentina, um, this is also from the U.S. government. They are celebrating that uh, because of fracking, Argentina Vaca Muerta is the name of the, this huge second largest in the world reservoir I was telling you about. Because of fracking, now Argentina begins to export LNG. Guess where it's going to come? It's going to come to Europe. So for me, that's why it's so important to, to join this fight because we, everything is connected. And if you cut off the consumption, you can affect the production. And this is what, where I was telling you, Sid, is located. It's bigger than Denmark in size, the, the size of Vaca Muerta. Mm. And I was living in Mendoza, which is the northernmost side, beautiful province, the wine country of Argentina, many famous wines come from there. And um, I didn't tell you my story, but I'm a scientist and I just came back. I was living in the U.S. for 10 years, working in the Silicon Valley in California. I moved back to Mendoza to build an eco village there. I bought a farm and we were building eco homes, sustainable uh, earth ships and things like this, planting thousands of trees to forest and help the environment and so on. And fracking came. I, I chose Mendoza because they have a strong environmental awareness and they stopped mountaintop mining many years earlier, and I thought it was the best place to be. And then the government, the people that are now in government, are the ones that 10 years earlier were leading the protest against uh, mining. <laughs> and now they betray their own people, and in secret, initially, they were doing fracking. So I created, I found out there was a secret study the government was doing, and um, I created an organization called EcoLeaks, which is like an environmental version of WikiLeaks, we got this report, we leaked it last year, and this led to huge protests, tens of thousands of people on the streets blocking roads and so on, and it led to me being persecuted, becoming having the most criminal cases in Argentina for fighting fracking, death threats and so on, and recently I had to run into exile, and we, I'm living in, in Berlin now for the last three, year, three months or so. But um, this is what Vaca Muerta, the owners of Vaca Muerta are, and if you can see, so these are the biggest companies that have the biggest chunks of the reservoirs assigned to them. Look at the, the countries. Total from France. France has prohibited fracking. So what the hell is France doing there? And you know, this is because people, in mostly the public is not aware, but if Friends for Future students know this and they affect pressure on the French government, how are you gonna be so hypocritical to stop fracking in your country and frack all over the world uh, this should be stopped. And uh, ExxonMobil, of course, from the US, Shell, which is partly Dutch, partly British, and then you have Chevron, and you have Winter, Wintershall from Germany. So we are actually thinking of taking some action, maybe to start making this more publicly known in Germany, because I think we can uh, affect some of that. And uh, Pan American Energy, which is owned partly by England. Where is Capex from? Argentina. Oh. Yeah, the ones that I didn't put the numbers are either Argentinian or mostly owned by local capitals. Mm. Um, so this is what I was beginning to tell you. We created this EcoLeaks organization and leaked this document last March. And that's where uh, began a lot of uh, becoming aware of what was going on because the media were saying nothing. And this secret study was revealing that fracking was already contaminating the aquifers in Mendoza. So the people of Mendoza, remember, they have a strong environmental awareness and they defend their water above anything else because Mendoza is a desert where only 3% of their surface is under cultivation. Nine, uh, 97 is a desert. So the rivers of Mendoza don't account for almost, uh, altogether they don't account for one of the rivers you have in Europe. It's a very limited water and so they're really adamant to defend it. So we built, at the time, was the largest resistance movement in the world. Tens of thousands of people all over the province. We made a lot of travel. We had a lot of help from 350.org, actually, who initially helped us by sharing the publication of EcoLeaks, which we, we made a Facebook account. And initially, who would believe us? It was our word against the whole government, the media, everyone. But 350 shared it on their website, on their Facebook page. And this helped us gain momentum to get more credibility. Then we were able to get to national media and broke the censorship of the local government that was trying to keep it under the carpet. And we really made a lot of travel over this past year. A lot of signatures were collected. A lot of law, uh, law projects were introduced to the parliament to ban fracking. But also the government had a lot of repressive measures, including uh, while well, persecuting some of us like myself, 
and they approved a code of conduct that makes it illegal to call on demonstrations, and it makes it illegal to say certain things on social media. So if they think that you insulted the governor, they could put you in jail or give you a big fine. They don't use it all the time, but they can use it selectively to make examples of certain people. So since then, they have been able to demobilize the movement a lot. People are afraid. They are afraid for their liberty. They are afraid to lose their job, to have a relative lose their job if they are connected somehow to the state. So it's a very repressive situation. And now, this is really great news. This picture is from yesterday, from the town that I just came from. It's a small town, but it has the strongest environmental awareness in Mendoza. And last year, we had the biggest march probably in the history of Argentina with almost 15,000 people from a population of 30,000. 15,000 marching for a kilometer or more to ban fracking. So, and now, because of all of this, Fridays for Future were born, uh, or a, a, a representation of Fridays for Future were born in Alvear, that are actually yesterday were blocking the roads all day. They did the first strike from school in Argentina's history, because Fridays for Future exists in Argentina for a few months, but until now they have been mostly, they haven't striked from school. They have been trying to do stuff, they managed to pass the national emergency declaration, uh, but this is the first time, and the great thing is that it's coming from rural Argentina, from the middle of nowhere, not from the main capital. And uh, they were actually threatened. They sent the police to stop them. So, and the kids said, no, we're not gonna leave the road. Send the police. Uh, you can put us all in jail where we are staying. So, so I think they need the help of everyone. Correctly, this local Fridays for Future, their first strike was a roadblock. At the same time. Yeah, so like they, they did not have an intermediate stage. They didn't go to a park. They, they, and the great thing is because the adults are demobilized because of fear and everything else, but now this is like a green birth of something new. And the, the children, the teenagers, they, they saw their parents fighting for so long, 10 years ago, and now the last year. And they are taking on that, uh, you know, they're taking that on on themselves. And the great thing is that because Alvear has so much support against fracking that all the adults support the kids. But you know, the government was so worried that they got threats even from the school that they would be counted two for one for the absent day. So this is illegal, but they were threatening the directors of the schools were saying, if you don't come to school today, we will, uh, it will count for two. And they were saying, like, one of the directors actually traveled to the, to the road and they filmed her. I'm trying to get the video. They're afraid to leak it out because they filmed, them, filmed the director of the school threatening the kids. Wow. The, and this is direct from orders from the government because these directors may actually be with the kids. They, in, in their mind, they're against fracking. Everyone is. But the government is really worried and this is an election year. So there is a lot at stake. And then they send the police. And then after the police, they send the army. Like it's called gendarmería, it's like intermediate between the army and the police. And the army was supposed to clear the road, but they couldn't do it because it's the kids. So I think it's really important to, to try to support them and their fight and your fight are connected. And it's great. If we all come together, I think there will be no stopping you. There will be no stopping us. Are there, are there videos of the... Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I can send you, and uh, I can send uh, you have the WhatsApp group, and I'll be happy. And we have, we yeah, built, yeah. we built the largest Facebook group in the world against fracking. Uh, initially, we had forty-four thousand members, and you're all welcome to join. It's in Spanish, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Facebook recently, and that's that's the main tool we have because most of the media don't say anything, but we have been able to break the censorship because what we publish on that group makes news because it gets viral, so they cannot stop it, and they cannot control it, but they have tried, and Facebook, a few months ago, removed 14,000 members wow. arbitrarily with no explanation, and they're playing always into the government's hands. And they removed from our group more people than the second largest in the world has, which is England with 11,000 people. But we use social media a lot, and if it wasn't for Facebook and WhatsApp, this movement that we did last year would not have been possible, because the interviews we made on radios the audio was shared on WhatsApp and it would go viral and the same on Facebook. So thank God we have them, even though they are corrupt, but it's good to have them. So now I pass it on to, to Clara.